These are the three things, your power, your love, the soundness of mind. The, sound, the word sound in that passage of scripture means discipline. It means self-control. There ain't no way you can have one without having the other. If you're going to have self-control, you're going to be disciplined. If you're going to have discipline, it's because you are going to have self-control. And there's going to come the time in our lives that the soundness of mind is going to have to be there and stay there. I've told you many times in, in, in trying moments, uh, you cannot lose your ability to rationally think. I think back, and I don't pat myself on the back, I'm just saying it's what, it's what happened. When at nearly 80 miles an hour, I went off that road hydroplane and going sideways down that hill at, at, at nearly 80 miles an hour, I never lost my mind, I never, I never panicked, I turned loose of the steering wheel, never touched the brake, something inside me was saying, you got to ride it out. I was able to keep, I was, I was able to keep my mind and understand that by hitting the brake, maybe all it takes to flip this truck. It's not going to stop me. The brakes are not going to stop me going sideways. 80 miles an hour, the brakes ain't going to stop me going sideways. And there ain't nothing I can do with this steering wheel. So I turned loose of it all and just rode it out with no panic, no, no fear whatsoever. That's what I'm talking about. That in the hour of great tribulation or great trial, you've got to be able to maintain your brain. Amen. You can't let somebody else have it or either you're going to be destroyed. Now, I want to look at, uh, I want to look first at Saul uh, the first king of Israel, and I want to show you a case of intimidation. Saul was a warrior. Saul was a fighter. He had every reason in the world to believe and trust in himself and have confidence in himself because he was a fighter. I mean, he was a warrior. He slayed, he, he slayed thousands, the Bible said. But it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. There's an enemy coming that you're going to have to deal with you never dealt with before. And it's not what you did with the enemies of the past. It's what you're going to do with the enemies of the future. And it's what you're going to do with the enemy that shows up today. Amen. Today, today is what's going to determine tomorrow. Amen. The past is gone. Today is what's going to determine tomorrow. What you're going to do with the enemy that you are yet to face. There's a big one out there somewhere. There's a big one out there somewhere. And the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel 17, 11, it says, when Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, talking about Goliath, when Saul and all of Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. The Bible tells us, as you read the whole story, that they stayed every man in their tents. That's what you call paralyzed. You see a demon of fear working now because now there was an enemy who has struck a deal. Goliath says, I will come out and fight you. And if I win the fight, you send your best. You send whoever you've got. This whole war will come down between me, Goliath, and the best that you've got. You send them out to me. If they defeat me, Goliath said, if they defeat me, we will be your servants. If I defeat him, you will be our servants. That's what the deal was about. Goliath was 13 feet tall. And the Bible shows us here a clear case of intimidation. Where has Saul's power gone? Where has Israel's power gone? Where has the power gone? This confidence in which power gives you. This confidence in what God has already done for you in the past that should tell you what he'll do for you today. Why are you afraid today when God has delivered you so many times before? Where did the power go? There was something that he saw physically stood before him and he had no power. I told you, t t intimidation is a thing that comes upon us whenever we feel powerless. So the devil will bring the Goliaths, the problems, the big ones. The devil will hit you with a Goliath sooner or later because what he wants you to do is even the most powerful ones among us who's had many victories, he wants you to face that obstacle and that enemy that you've never seen, that you've never, and will make you feel powerless. But what the children of God has to do in every situation concerning our lives 
is to understand it does not matter what it is, no matter what it is in this physical world, I am never powerless. Even from the smallest things to the greatest things, brothers and sisters, just naturally speaking, you are never powerless in any situation that you, that you meet. Never, ever. But a situation that breeds intimidation can make you believe or make you feel you powerless to change it, to go on with your life or to make your life better. And that's what Goliath did. Goliath came and he showed up and he was the biggest warrior and it didn't come down to two, two battles between two nations fighting. It came down to one offer. You whip me, we'll be your servants. I whip your best, you'll be my servants. And no one had the courage they did not have what? The first thing God gave us to what? Overcome. They lost their power. And nobody would come out of the tents. And nobody would show up. Game over. Then a little fellow named David. A little fellow named David showed up. And did David maintain his power? He did. But not only that, he maintained his love. David spoke it clearly. His love for God was never diminished, was never shaken. His love for God first, that's the power. His love for God first for what he said was, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies, not of Israel, but the armies of God? Amen. Amen. David's mind was on God. Then David never lost his power. Because then he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that I should fear him. You see, he maintained his power. He said, with my bare hands, I have killed a lion. With my bare hands, I have killed a bear. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that I should be afraid of him? He had the confidence. The confidence of what? Power. He knew he didn't whip that bear. He knew the Almighty showed up. He knew, he knew he didn't whip that lion. There ain't no man living gonna go toe to toe with a lion and whip the lion. No man can do that. David knew instantly when I killed that lion with my hands, it was God Almighty that gave me the power and did it. It's God's power working through me and it breeds a confidence inside of us that many will call arrogance. But I just don't believe the devil wins. Still got the confidence. I still strongly believe that if something gets on my back, I sincerely believe I can find a way to get it off. So you saw what David had. He, had, he maintained his power. In, a, in, this, in this time of intimidation, this conflict, he maintained his power. He didn't lose his power. Saul lost his power. Israel lost their power. David never lost the power. He's defying the armies of God. God is certainly involved in this. I'm certainly taking the battle up for my God. And my God is going to give me the power I need to not only stand in this, but he's going to give me the power I need to overcome this. And he did. Hallelujah. And then y'all might remember the story of Joshua and Caleb. The Bible tells us that Joshua and Caleb is the only two people that actually came out of uh, Egypt on the march to the promised land. They were actually the only two people that went into the promised land from that generation. And whenever they got to the promised land and looked over into it, you know the story. Whenever they looked over into it, they saw that the land was filled with giants. And all of the people was afraid and all of the people were fearful. But Joshua and Caleb said this in Numbers 13, 30. And Caleb still calmed the people before Moses. Not, on, not only with this power, love, and soundness of mind keep you calm, but it also has the power to calm everybody else down. Sometimes the whole house needs to calm down. Amen? Everybody in the house needs to calm down sometimes. 
Things ain't going to change sometimes when only one of you calms down. We're going to have to calm down. And sometimes this power, not only. He stilled the people. And Caleb stilled, quietened, comforted. He stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. What did the other men say? All of the rest of Israel. See, you can't be a peer pressure man. You can't be a person who's subjected to the crowds and you are intimidated because the multitude is going in a particular direction. When you know you're right, when you know it's God, when you know it's his promises, you stand on it no matter if the whole church leaves you or not. Sometimes you're going to stand on your own. Sometimes you're going to stand by yourself. Whatever the circumstances are, there's no one particular area. There is the time coming you are going to have to stand your ground and you're going to at least believe that you're by yourself. But you and I both knows there ain't no time that we actually by ourselves. Amen. Because we got the Father, we got the Son, and we got the Holy Ghost if we ain't got nobody else. Hallelujah. Like that old drunk man walking out I told y'all about before. That old drunk man staggering to his car and these fellas came up was going to rob him. And he said, you better not mess with me and my friends to get you. And they said, I don't see nobody. He said, them the ones that'll get you. Amen. You might not see the Father. You might not see my son. You might not see the Holy Ghost. But they here, amen, and they the ones that'll get you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The point of the business is, is you got to believe with all your heart. Believe and know with all your heart. There ain't nothing you're in. You can't come out of. There ain't nothing nobody brings at you that you cannot overcome it. There ain't nothing going on inside your head that you can't overcome. There ain't nothing going on inside your body you can't overcome. There's a miraculous power. That lives inside of me and you. That's the truth. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Sounds just like Saul, don't it? They're doing exactly the same thing. See, intimidation always works the exact same way. That's because it's a spirit, and every spirit possesses its own personality. That's why when the Spirit takes hold of you, you will always bring forth and manifest the personality of that particular spirit. You can name it whatever you want to name it. It's a demon spirit. And the reason why everybody who has that particular thing acts exactly the same way is because it's exactly the same spirit. And so this demon of intimidation is acting the same way you've got a multitude telling you here and now we can't do it we can't do it well hey the multitude wins if everybody says we can't then we can't but you got those two people who still got this power love and sound mind they had power because what did they believe they believed that we can go in and take it that's the power they had love because they knew they was on a mission from God and the love for God, the devotion to God never wavered because it's God who got us here. Then the soundness of man comes in. They're able to rationalize in their minds, okay, every bit of this started out back there in Egypt. We saw 10 months of unprecedented plagues fall on that country when a prophet came in we saw a sea part we saw a God feed us for 40 years in the desert dropping manna down from heaven we saw a water come from rocks and then we saw the Jordan part for us to get to where we are right now because God said there's a promised land. God said there's a promised land I'm taking you to. And then all these major obstacles that we have had to cross. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Not by the hand of man. It wasn't by Moses that sea part. It wasn't, it wasn't Moses feeding us bread falling from heaven. It was God all the way. And facing now this obstacle, these enemies, these minds are saying if God calls us out of there if God sent us over here if God worked miracles all the way to get us here how in God's name is he not gonna finish this deal 
And so Joshua and Caleb had the strength to go in. They had to truly be devoted to the God and faith in him that could not be shaken.